Ladies and gentlemen, Barry Threw. Thank you. Uh, okay, I'll use this one. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Barry Threw. Um, I'm based in San Francisco uh, and am founding team member of the Gray Area Foundation for the Arts there. Uh, until recently, I was also the director of software at a company called Obscura Digital that does a lot of these sorts of um, weird reality sorts of experiences. But I'm not going to talk to you about either of those things today. Um, I'm going to talk to you about a different sort of weird reality in Syria. Um, and the question we're asking here with this project is with the current turbulent space in our world, can we use iconic and culturally important architectures as active agents for art, community building, uh, education or social change. Uh, can media and virtual architecture be an active agents to enable us to cognitively map our geopolitical environments and potentially help us better understand the world? Um, our story starts here with a gentleman named Basil Cardabel, um, who's a Syrian-Palestinian open source software developer, researcher, uh, and internet act activist who was instrumental in the negotiations for Creative Commons in the Arab world and ran a hacker space called ID Lab in Damascus, an educational space. Around 2004, with a publisher called Alaus in Damascus, he started a project to research and reconstruct the famous archaeological site of Palmyra in Syria. Um, here's an example of the Temple of Bel, one of the sites there, um, and some of the reconstruction that they did. Um, at the time, it was mostly for educational and uh, uh, tourism purposes. Um, and here's a rendering of that same thing. Um, unfortunately, most of this work wasn't publicly released. It was closed. Uh, and during the civil unrest in 2010, the project shut down. And unfortunately, Basil uh, was jailed by the Syrian regime um, and spent about four years in a prison called Adra uh, in Syria with about 7,000 other political prisoners. Uh, the, you can kind of see the city of Palmyra in the middle of the map. Uh, just the point of this site is that it's really at a crossroads of a lot of competing political interests in Syria, uh, which makes it a site of some note to be taken and retaken over in efforts to control this uh, cultural symbolism, to control the cultural identity of the area. Um, in 2015, two things happened. The Islamic State uh, captured the city and started blowing things up. This is a picture of the aforementioned Temple of Bell, sort of before and after. Uh, here's satellite imagery of the same site. Uh, much of the other archaeological site uh, looks sort of like this. Um, Syria is a pretty important area. Uh, it has six UNESCO World Heritage Sites, uh, the most of any country on Earth. A uh, great number of them have been looted to support the um, uh, various parties uh, taking control of the region over there, um, and art and artifacts traded on the illicit market. Um, and then Basil disappeared. Uh, he was taken to a Syrian regime black site about a year ago, actually October 3rd is the one year date of him being missing. Uh, there's a campaign <coughs> called Free Basil to you know, try and get some information on his release. Uh, and no information has been released yet. Um, so we started a project with a number of international partners to reestablish the work that he did on this reconstruction, including uh, MIT Media Lab, Creative Commons, Electronic Frontier Foundation. Um, and so we do research, uh, trying to dig up information on this um, various sorts of sites around Palmyra as our first test site on this project, um, and start remodeling things. You know, here's some examples of some of the models that are released under Creative Commons zero licenses into the public domain, um, available for free to download. Um, the monumental arches there, which were also destroyed, a rendering of the current reconstruction of that, and some other cultural artifacts like this, which is a Salah, which is a, a, a lion statue, sort of an Edis. Um and the way we do this is both online, web community based, and also by running workshops around the world. Here we are in Paris, uh, some workshops in Dubai, researching and remodeling things, and various manifestations of this stuff is sort of popping up around the world. Um, we had some 3D print prints to get these things printed out. Uh, we have done some things in virtual you know, worlds. Um, this is in Singapore in the Science Center where a bunch of kids and adults helped us uh, 
reconstruct this and kind of imprint their own creativity on one of these structures and what it meant to them. Uh, various exhibitions around the world, such as the Museum of Art and Design, and recently we're in the Dennis Architectural Biennale um, as a member of the V&A Museum's Pavilion in an exhibition called World of Fragile Parks. Uh, really, I'm here to solicit your help as bright young minds um, that are attuned to world building. You can help us with modeling, you can help us with our tech pipeline, you can help us with just by sharing and you know, keeping an eye out for some of our events or um, suggesting places uh, that we can present. Um, there's the website. Uh, and so in you know, brief, um, you know, I, I'm suggesting that instead of it being static tombs and sort of archive knowledge here, these architectures can be given some sort of agency that makes sense of social change. Uh, they can serve as cognitive amp amplifiers in built worlds um, to develop culture and transform society. Uh, and potentially we can leverage these poetics to affect the public and help humans understand the critical issues that face us all. Uh, you know, the, one of the big themes here is the future becomes a threat when the collective imagination becomes um, incapable of seeing alternatives to trends like devastation, increased poverty, or violence. Uh, what I'm suggesting here are ways to culturally prototype alternative futures, building on the past uh, to create a positive political gesture and ultimately deliver some sort of existential alibi for virtual world building. So uh, come see me about it and we'll talk. Thank you. <laughs>